I know there's a thousand videos on YouTube about people installing this A-Service tank, but I feel like all the videos that I've found personally always forget to mention some things that are interesting to me at least, like the weight difference to the original equipment on the bike and do a range test and does it actually take 14 liters? So all of this is going to be answered in this video. So in three parts, install, measure the difference in weight, how much does it actually take in when it's dry and how long can we actually ride. First we need to snap away the seat and plastics covering the tank. I like to pump the old fuel out of the old tank to decrease any spilling. Pull out the electronics and two hoses under the tank and continue to remove the fuel pump from the base of the old tank. Be careful with this one to not twist the floater assembly when taking it out. It's very delicate. It's very important to clean the rubber seal below with your hoodie like a real man. Make sure the orientation of the pump unit is the same as the original tank was. A service provides new washers and nuts to reinstall the old unit to the new tank. Remember to use Loctite here. We don't want the bike becoming a 60 mile an hour torch on the next drive. This is very important. Tighten these one by one by very small increments to get a very flat seal against the bottom of the tank. And by any means do not exceed 6 Nm on the torque on these nuts. I just did it by feel, but you can use a torque wrench if you need it. Attach the provided rubber pads to the mounting holes on the tank. These are really tight to put in, so you need a tool, something that doesn't break the rubbers, but something to push this sucker in. It's definitely not going by hand. All right. Attach the number one fuel hose to the new tank and the electronic cable. The overflow hose we will attach later. <sighs> At this point you can wrench in the tank mounts. Install the provided seat mount screw and remember to use Loctite on this one. Insert the provided holes to the fuel cap, root it below the tank, at this point you can cut some of the extra length off. Make sure the provided joint is mounted so that the arrow in the joint itself points towards the tank cap. All right, we're almost done. Not sure how much these do, but I still put in the new tapes to meet the old ones under the plastics. The install is very simple. It takes like 10 minutes if you're fast. Weighing in the old hardware and what actually gets installed to the bike. The difference is minus 500 grams. So that's kind of nice to notice that even though the tank is bigger and looks bigger, it's actually lighter. I know, I know this this looks and probably is very stupid but this is the commitment I do to this channel and you as an audience I'm walking the bike completely dry to the nearest gas station so that we can actually see how much can I fit in that 14 liter Acerbis tank is it exactly 14 is it more is it less we will see in a moment, and I'm taking a big risk because uh, I'm filling it up all the way to the top. So I'm really, really hoping that it doesn't leak. I'm gonna get a couple of laughs probably. Oh, the lengths I take making these videos for you guys. If I was a normal person, 
but I would have just put in the fuel that I had in the canister. But I'm not, because I'm a f***ing YouTuber. <sighs> Not leaking yet. Eight liters. Okay, I trust it. I think it's pretty full now. That's enough. So 13.16. It's not even close. One liter shy, but it's still five, maybe a little bit more than five liters, more than the stock tank, so. I'm happy about that anyway. It does feel a little bit more top heavy when it's full, but not by much. Very slightly notice that uh, it's a little bit more top heavy. Considering the benefit of uh, much extended range, I think it's well worth it. I know there's someone in the comments gonna be saying that, okay, you didn't fill it up all the way. Could have still gotten a deciliter in. Let's see about that. Oh, my back. I'm an old man. Broken old man. That's 1.6, 1.7 deciliters right there. All right, if you keep it upright, you can put a little bit more than we got in in the gas station. But let's see if we can put all of this there. Not quite. We got in pretty close one deciliter, just as I expected. So the total is... So this is not a 14 liter tank. Alrighty then, so this I'm gonna be taking with me tomorrow. It's gonna come in this 5 liter Krieger bag. Alrighty. I will reset this once again. Oh, I hate these buttons. These buttons on this Honda are up atrociously bad. Right now we are starting from zero and tomorrow I will start logging the trip also with the GPS and we will see how far will this tank us lead us and this is not a hyper mile test. I'm not gonna be riding the bike gingerly or or trying to preserve fuel. I'm gonna be riding it hard like I usually do. All right trip recording is on trip is showing 400 meters, everything is full, let's get on with it. I'll come back to this video when we get the first bar to disappear from the meter. That's interesting to me because it's probably gonna last a very long time compared to the stock tank. Let's test it out, it's gonna be a long day. Hundred and fifteen is the first time the first bar disappears from the fuel gauge. Hundred and eighty two kilometers and now it's showing half a tank. Just dropped one bar, so I can finally say that it dropped to one bar and I have been driving 252 kilometers according to the GPS I don't think I even needed the GPS because the trip meter on the bike says 254.8 so it's two kilometers off so this is very accurate
but I gotta check engine light so it's probably going let's take it out let's roll it as far as it goes let's stop it here okay so it feels empty <laughs> it feels super light 340 is the final number I have to put some fuel in it it's running a little bit weird even though I try to tilt it from side to side so I think the Acerbis tank does get pretty empty I don't think there's a lot of fuel in there 